Hey, Mystery Bob here. I was up a little too high for a second. Uh, we're going to talk about solving two-step equations. Before we left, we were solving really hard equations with variables on both sides and distributive property. But all those equations eventually whittled down to a final step or two. And what we're going to review today is just that final step or two. It's called the two-step equation. Okay? So recognize when we see it. It's the easy part. It's where we got to that you're like, ah, I can do this now. It's not as hard. So let's go. So two-step equations. Here is one. So you may want to write this down. If you're taking notes, which I think is a great idea, write down 2x minus 4 equals 15. What is our goal here? Our goal is to get x by itself. We want to have math happen here. Math is going to happen here. And then at the end of that math, we get x equals, and in this case, well, a lot of cases, we're going to have x equals a number, x equal to 5, x is equal to 15 thirds. Who knows what 15 thirds is 5? Um, but that's the goal. x equals something. x wants to be by itself. And remember that analogy that I said before, here you are, this is your bedroom, and your little sister and your big brother are messing with you. You're tired of it. You want them out of it. Right? So how do we do that? Well, let's go to the next slide and find out. So how do we solve this? Again, you're thinking about that, right? This is what you want to be alone. Right now we've got this two messing with you and this negative four messing with you. So I got to get rid of them. How do I get rid of a minus four on this side? That's right. I got a zero pair. What's the zero pair that goes with minus four? Plus four. Okay. Now remember this. Remember an equal sign is like a balance beam, right? What it's saying is this side weighs the same amount as this side. And what I did just right now is I added four pounds to this side. Okay, that's going to make the balance beam look like this. What do I have to do to equalize that? Yeah, I got to add four pounds to this side so it comes back to equal, right? So it comes back to balance. So if I added four to that side, I have to add four to this side. So what do we get then? We zero paired out that minus four with the plus four, so that's gonzo. So I'm left with 2x equals 15 plus 4 is 19. All right, well, same thing now. That equal sign is there. I'm having two times as much x as I want. So what's the opposite of two times? How do I undo two times something? If you said divide by 2, you are correct, right? But if I take half of this weight off, right, if I cut this weight in half, what do I have to do over here? I got to do the same thing, right? I've got to cut that weight in half as well. So dividing both sides by 2 is what I got. So I get x is equal to 19 halves. Now I could leave it like that. Most high school teachers are fine with this, right? You could also put it into a decimal equivalent, plug it into a calculator if you want to. That's 9.5. All right, moving along. Give you yourself a chance to try. So if you want to pause right here and give it a shot, ready, set, go. All right, I'm here. You either wanted me to do it or you did it. So let's see how you did it. Minus 3 from both sides is going to be my first step. I get 4x by itself because this two, these two zero pair out, and I get 16. Oh, this one ends up being much nicer. The opposite of times by 4 is divide by 4. Again, I must do that to both sides, and I get x is equal to 4. Done. Happy. Whenever I get something right, I put a little smiley face next to it. It's true. True story. All right, that was easy. All right, one more to try on your own. Again, press pause. All right, and here comes Mr. Reboff. All right, this one's a little trickier. We got minus signs everywhere on that left side. Again, I just have to think, keep it simple. What is going to zero pair out a minus five? That's going to be a plus five. All right, so plus five, plus five. Remember, both sides get it. All right, some people like to draw this line down here. I think that's great. It keeps, makes sure that you do the same thing on both sides. All right, so left over on the left side is just the 2x because these two zero paired out. 11 plus 5 is 16. All right, last step. Last step, I'm going to divide both sides because this is being multiplied by negative 2. The opposite of multiplying by negative 2 is divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. These two become a giant 1, right? Anything divided by itself is 1, so that's just going to be x on that side. Over here, I've got, well, let's just look at the number. 16 divided by 2, that's 8. And I have to decide, is it positive or negative? I have a good thing happening to a bad person. That is a bad thing. We don't want that. Unless it turns their life around and they become a good person. All right, so x equals negative 8. Good stuff. 
Good stuff. All right, now we're going to get to something tricky. We haven't seen a lot of these this year. Okay, so let's look at this problem. We've got, now, if we ignore that first thing, right, if I could, if I could just, um, oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. If I could just kind of cover this up for a second here, cover this up for a second, I've got something plus two equals 10. I can start off the same way that I did every other one. Okay, so let's forget about what's happening over there. I'm going to erase what I did. Um, but I'm going to just start off with subtracting two from both sides like I've done before. Let's just get this simpler and then figure out what's happening. So I have x over three equals, and that's 10 minus two, which is eight. Okay, all right. Well, what does this mean? X and then a, that a little line and then a three. It's a fraction, right? Fractions mean, do they mean add? Do they mean subtract? Do they mean divide or do they mean multiply? If you said divide, that's right. Look at the division sign, right? Look at it. That's where the division sign came from x divided by three, right? One divided by two, right? One half is 0.5, right? One divided by two, okay? That's what it means. So how do I undo divide by three? What's the opposite of divide by three? If you said the opposite of division is multiplying, then you're right. So to undo divide by three, I'm gonna multiply by three. I'm gonna show it in two different ways on the two different sides, but the three, times the x over three, that's gonna undo the divide by three, right? I'm gonna get three x over three if I wanna do it the long way. Three x over three, three divided by three is a giant one, so I just get x equals eight times three is 24, okay? You could have crossed them out here, right? And made the giant one here. Three divided by three is one, x equals 24. There we go, all right, not too bad, right? I hope not, give it a shot, ready, set, go. All right, if you're back, you're back. If you wanted to just watch me do it, that's okay as well. So let's get rid of this first. If you said add five to both sides, you are correct. That's a good way to start it. X over two equals 13. All right, all right, all right. Now you gotta think, what does this mean? This means X divided by two. You gotta think, what's the opposite of that? It's the opposite of divide by two. If you said multiply by two, you are feeling sassy. Those become a giant one. I get x equals 13 times 2, which is 26. Boom, 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 boom. All right. We're rocking this, right? Not too hard, right? All right. Give yourself another chance. Getting a lot of practice here because this is new ish. Ready, set, go. All right. You're back. The thing that made this hard was we're subtracting 7, right? We haven't done a lot of that, but that's a zero pair. If I do it to one side, I do it to the other. Tricky part here, think about you're underwater. You're already down three feet underwater. This says you're gonna go down seven more. So down seven more. You're three feet deep, now you're going seven more. Is that 10 feet underwater? Yes, so that's gonna be negative 10. And that equals X divided by five. Well, okay, what can I do? Min, this means division, divide by five. So the opposite of divide by five is multiply by five, and we get x equals, this becomes a giant one, equals negative 10 times five. So five times 10 is 50. Now let's decide if that 50 is a positive or negative. We have a bad thing happening to a good person. That is not good, that's never good. We don't want bad things happening. There we go, x equals negative 10. All right, all right, let's move along. That was the other. Quiz time. Ready? Again, after I read it, press pause, give yourself a shot. Ooh, it's a weekly review. So we have five to the eighth power over five squared. We have two cubed times two cubed. We have eight to the zero. What does that mean? Something to the zero power. We have three to the negative two power. That's a tricky one right there. And if you get stuck, yeah, just, just unpause and see what we got. Ready, set, give your best shot. All right, if you are done here, um, let's give the first one a shot. We're dividing. So we keep the bases, 5 and 5, keep the base, and we subtract the exponents, 8 minus 2. So that's going to be 5 to the 6th power. Now, if you did it the other way, if you did extended multiplication, I think that's great. Draw 5 8s, 1, 2, 3, all right, 8, sorry, my bad, 8 5s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
I know those look like S's, but just pretend that they are fives. And then I've got two more fives on the bottom. We get the giant one going on two of them, and then we count one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six fives. So if you wanted to go that way, it's a little longer, but it worked, right? It worked. It still works. All right, this one again. When we're multiplying, we have to check. Do they have the same base? Yes, they do. It's multiplication. So what do I do with the exponents? Keep the base and add the exponents. Two times, sorry, two to the three plus three power is two to the sixth power. So that's that one. A couple things to the sixth power so far. All right, eight to the zero. Do you remember anything to the zero power is one? All right, anything to the zero power is one. Tricky one here, three to the negative two. Anything to a negative power, if it's a whole number, we turn into a fraction. And what do we put on the bottom? We put this on the bottom, except what changes? Yep, it's just this. And if you change that to be 1 ninth, that's okay as well. Either one of these would be an excellent answer. Cool? Cool. All right. So, some solving. This is from what we did today. Ready, set, go. All right. If you're back, let's crank through these. I'm going to do these quickly because we just had a lot of practice in. Add 5 to both sides. Add 5 to both sides. That 0 pairs this out. I get 3x equals 6. Most of you can already see that the answer is going to be 2. I'm going to take the step of showing my division on both sides. I did not expect you to have to do that in this problem. So there we go, x equals 2. And then here, well, if you haven't paused yet, pause, sorry. All right, here we go, we're back. Add 3 to both sides, add 3 to both sides. We get x divided by 4 is equal to 8. And now we have to think about the opposite of division, the opposite of division. To undo that, because we want x by itself, the opposite of that is to multiply. So when we multiply these two, it becomes a giant one. 4x divided by 4 is just 1x. And then on this side, 8 times 4 is 32. Oh, that's I went too fast for my pen. My pen was like, slow down, bro. I think that's it. I think we're done for the day. Good job, people. Um, best of luck. Uh, again, see me at those hours, Monday, Wednesday, 1 to 2, and Fridays, 10 to 11. If you have any questions on any of that quiz we just did, um, let's go over a couple of problems together. I've got a whiteboard. You've got a whiteboard. We can work through some problems together. I will help you out. These are really important things. Right? What was just in this quiz, ginormous for for a freshman year math next year. If you got these down, if you feel confident, I can handle this, you're gonna go in with a good foundation and you're gonna feel strong in that class. Cool? Well, um, I will see you all later. Hope you have a wonderful day.